this is a, actually a federal judge. I don't know how many people know who uh, Judge Silverman is, but this guy is based. You guys are going to love to hear this because I love to see this. I love to hear it. Federal judge warns dangerous media has very close to one party control in blistering libel case dissent. Judge Lawrence Silverman calls New York Times, Washington Post, virtually Democratic Party broadsheets. This is amazing. Now, I, I actually have his whole, the whole legal document. It's 43 pages long. It's very legally la 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 mumbo jumbo. Um, and it takes <laughs> a long time, you know, but I'm not, obviously we don't have the time to do that. But this sums it up fairly well. A federal appeals court judge has offered a blistering dissent in an obscure libel case against or that takes the measure of the mainstream media's bias. The case centers on a 2018 report from Global Witness Publishing that accused Liberian government officials, Chris, uh, Christina or Christ, Christian, Christiania? I don't know how to say that. Uh, <laughs> Christiania, and, we'll go with Christiania. Okay, yeah, Christiana. Christiana, maybe that's what it is, Ta and Randolph McLean, of accepting bribes from Exxon. Ta and McLean sued Global Witness, alleging defamation, and their claims were dismissed in Friday's ruling. However, in the course of his partial dissent, D.C. Circuit Judge Lawrence Silberman went on an unprecedented written tirade against the press in which he argued that the Supreme Court should revisit the landmark 1964 New York Times versus Sullivan, Sullivan ruling that granted the media broad First Amendment protections from being sued by public officials. New considerations have arisen over the last 50 years that make the New York Times decision, which I believe have, I have faithfully applied in my dissent, a threat to American democracy, he wrote. He wrote. Uh, it must go. And it, he continues, the increased power of the press is so dangerous today because we are very close to one party control of these institutions, says Silberman, who was nominated to the federal bench by Ronald Reagan has been and has been a senior judge on the D.C. court since 2000. So this guy's been around. It's not just some young judge. Here he is. This is a picture from 2005. Although the bias against the Republican Party, not just controversial individuals, is rather shocking today. This is not new. It is a long-term secular trend going back at least to the 70s, Silberman wrote. Two of the three most influential papers, at least historically, the New York Times and the Washington Post, are virtually Democratic Party broadsheets. And the news section of the Wall Street Journal leans in the same direction. The orientation of these three papers is followed by the Associated Press and most large papers across the country, such as the Los Angeles Times, Miami Herald, and Boston Globe. Nearly all television, network, and cable is a Democratic Party trumpet. Even the government-supported national public radio follows along. The Reagan-appointed judge accused Silicon Valley of filtering news in, a way, in ways favorable to the Democratic Party and fueling censorship, citing the suppression of the New York Post's bombshell reporting of Hunter Biden in the final weeks of the 2020 presidential election. It is well accepted that viewpoint discrimination ra uh, raises the specter that the government may effectively drive certain ideas or viewpoints from the marketplace, Silberman said, but ideological uh, homogeneity in the media or in the channels of information distribution risks repressing, uh, repressing certain ideas from the public consciousness just as surely as if access were restricted by the government. I got to take a second here and just, I mean, I'm not even done. Yeah, a round of applause. But, I mean, applause you know that. what I'm saying? What? <laughs> so now, I mean, I, I, I'm speechless. How good did that feel to just hear this is a, a district a judge calling them out? This is something that I know you believe, okay? I I certainly believe it. You've been booted off because you were yeah. one of the – you. I don't even believe you were very controversial because you were reporting on actual news that the president at the time happened to retweet. And they were like, mm -hmm. whoa, this is someone that's shining a big, huge spotlight on our narrative and ruining it. And look, the president retweeted her. 
boop, we can't get rid of the president yet, but we can get rid of Savannah Hernandez. Exactly. And I'm glad that this judge is bringing this up because this is an, another important factor in this fight, because yep. not only is it, you know, big tech, social media where we're not allowed to have the voice, but we have an entire media that is also allowed to spread propaganda and essentially lies. You know, we have jo uh, Joy Behar who said that Antifa is fictitious. We have Jerry Nadler who said that they're a myth. And then when you have yep. independent journalists like myself who were out on the street exposing what Antifa was really doing, well, now... And honestly, if you wanna look at this in historical context, big tech is essentially destroying our history and all of the footage of what's actually going on in our streets. So yep. I'm glad that this judge is calling this out because the media has an inherent bias. We all know that it's ridiculous that they're allowed to continue to spread this narrative because that's what they have been doing with every single news story. They're always spinning a narrative. Look what just happened you know, with this incident in uh, Boulder. It yep. immediately became a race thing. Now it's an assault weapons thing based on the media narrative that they wanted to push. Yep. And this happens time and time again with whatever the issue at hand is. It's crazy. Now there's that new um, there's that new site to I don't I don't remember what wait I think I got it. Let me just check. It's called Ground News or something, and it basically hmm. takes whatever you are where you get your news sources. And someone mm -hmm. actually sent me this. I don't want to call them out who it was, but uh, let me just uh, scroll down so you can't see it. But they were like, I guess I was their one of their top three news influencers. And I was like, <laughs> oh, like, that's pretty cool. Like, I guess. Nice. I, nice. I guess that's I am. And yeah. I'm looking at this bar and it looks like they are very similar to me mm -hmm. um, in the sense that I'm just a little bit over 50 50. But this middle gray bar, I mean, blue sources to me are are a load of BS. I mean, I yeah. still check them out, but for the most part, it's 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 lies. It's propaganda pieces, puff pieces, stuff that they're trying to make people think instead of what I consider the, the news that I get my sources from are the raw truth. And they're like mm -hmm. this. What do you think? This is the raw truth. This is what's happening. And. I'm I'm rather proud of this little bar here. Well, see, and in that 25% just blue category right there, yeah. uh, you did point out something very important that it's just when it comes to a lot of these leftist media sites, it is essentially an op-ed. Every single story is an op-ed yep. at this point. Even yep. the headline is an opinion. So, yep. you know, you have your headline and then you have 10 paragraphs of someone's opinion. And then at the very bottom, maybe you get a fact or two on what's really going on, but you have to filter through all of that opinion. And the average person doesn't know that, that that's an opinion. And the media has done a great job of manipulating wording to scare people in terms of just the headline because they know, they, they know they're not going to read the entire article. So oh, I, I first saw this from Jack Posobiec and he, Oh yeah yeah I saw it too. So he posted I'm going to I'm trying to find it real quick. So he posted his he was like uh bias check, right? Mm -hmm. And Cernovich was like right in the middle. Uh he had a little bit of both but mostly right leaning. Um and then he did uh some comedians like, uh, what's his name from uh, The Daily Show? Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. 100% mm -hmm. blue. 100% surprise blue. Surprise there. A huge surprise. John there. Oliver. I'm honestly shocked. 100% shocked. blue. You know, and then yep. he started going through, like, looking through. I mean, it was a big thread. I'm Man, he posts a lot. So it's, I, I don't. Oh, did I just find it? Notice how my, no, it's someone else posting it. Man, he really does post a lot. Anyway. It's crazy because these people that are on the left side, there's no red at all. They are just, it's evil. I can't even, my brain can't handle whatever that is because that's lies. We're on uh, over here. Like you saw my little thing. Like I, I still look at the, the blue, the left side of news to see what their perspective is. And not all of it's BS. You know, there's some truth in it, but. I mean, it's so clear to me that these people are brainwashed. And that's what Judge Silberman's talking about. Here, let me finish exactly, reading this, Adam. this article. So yeah. Silberman also sounded the alarm about the serious efforts to muzzle outlets like Fox News that aren't under Democratic Party ideological control. 
it should be borne in mind that the first step taken by any potential authoritarian or dictatorial regime is to gain control of communications, particularly the delivery of news. It is fair to conclude, therefore, that one-party control of the press and media is a threat to a viable democracy, the judge continued. It may even give rise to countervailing extremism. The First Amendment guarantees a free press to foster a vibrant trade in ideas, but a biased press can distort the marketplace. And when the media has proven its willingness, if not eagerness, to sword to sort, it is a profound mistake to stand by unjustified legal rules that serve only to enhance the press's power. And to you, sir, I say thank you. You are a, a, a hero, Judge Silberman. You People should know your name because he is absolutely right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you remember, have you seen the, the video of, of all of the... Um, news media saying that this is a threat to our democracy and this is yep. a threat to our democracy and then they all do it and all of it and then it's like multiplies and multiplies and then there's like 60 of them saying the same thing exactly the same way over and over it's it's insane and and it's proof they have control of the news it is a democratic institution i, I mean a democrat like the democrats they control it can you imagine what would have happened if the news was truthful over the past couple years over Trump's presidency? The 2020 election would have been completely different. 100%. And that's why, too, we're seeing all of the Joe Biden voters, the people who genuinely did vote for Joe Biden, yeah. now shocked because they're living out what they voted in. Whereas over the past four years, they were just reading about how bad Trump was yep. and they weren't reading about all of the good policies that he did institute, how, uh, you know, his border control really was helping out Americans, the tax cuts that he was pushing forward. Yep. No one was talking about that. And, you know, going back to Trevor Noah having a 100% Democrat based media, 100%. Liberals love living in their bubble, and that's why I love going and doing Man on the Streets, because it's so easy to go to any of these leftist protests and just ask them, why do you hate Donald Trump? And they don't know, because the they media didn't give them the talking point for that. You know, if you challenge them just a little bit, if you just take one more step past that headline that they read, they can't, an they can't answer anything. I'm like, okay, well, where's that video? Where's that phrase? When did Donald Trump say this? They're like, I really couldn't tell you. I really don't know. I mean, the media <laughs> told me that he said it, but I didn't see it for myself, but it's biblical truth now. Yep. So I'm so glad about that this judge is standing up. Um, the media in itself is a whole nother big issue, and I'm glad that we are finally getting people in this country standing up against them. Hopefully. I mean, obviously, he is standing up, yes. And uh, you and I are both standing up and uh, to, to risking our channels, which I'm not going to I'm not going to stop talking about the stuff i you know mm -hmm. i'm sure it's a matter of time before i'm cut off you know i got a warning by just giving my opinion on something but uh they said that you know that's uh, not allowed here it's uh it yeah. is pretty pretty fantastic that uh we see someone like this a, a true hero in the time of authoritarianism like we're seeing the rise we are you're not allowed to talk against their narrative or you're booted off you, you you mentioned earlier before we went live about I mean the social media realm is basically China. You know you yeah. can't you you can't uh, say what you want before you're cut off. You know they get rid of you. Like you, take you for example, you weren't even you weren't even given your opinion. I mean you you do give your opinion, yes, but when before you were getting banned, you were just posting videos that you were taking yourself of people and you were literally doing a play-by-play. -play. This is happening. This is now happening. And that's it. And they booted you for it. That wasn't, that's not even towing, that's not even towing the line. That's staying behind the line and going, I'm just filming the line. I'm just and filming see, what's going on I on the other side. I would love your opinion on this because right now I'm just a naturally very stubborn person. So okay. if someone tells me I can't do something or I can't talk about something, then I'm going to talk about it. That's <laughs> why I started doing research into the vaccine because the government said that I had to take one if I wanted to travel or go to concerts. And I said, okay, if mm -hmm. I have to be forced to do this, then I would like to, you know, just do a little bit of research into it. Um, 
And so in terms of my social media, I take the same exact approach, especially because my Twitter was banned without reason. They say that they banned me because I was evading a suspension. That was my only account. I've never been banned before. I've never even been suspended before. That was the reasoning? That is the reason they gave me. And I tried to appeal it several times and they were just like, "Mm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not giving it back. So I didn't do anything to get banned off of Twitter and I got nuked anyway. And so my whole entire approach to social media at this point is say what you're going to say because you're going to get banned anyway. And I have a lot of uh, fights with my other conservative friends because they're like, well, this isn't a smart tactic to take because then you're not going to have any influence on the culture if you ultimately get banned from everything. But at the same time, morally, it's so difficult for me not to talk about these issues because they are the issues that need to be talked about. Guess what? If we have a hundred or a thousand conservatives saying the same old tired talking point, look at Joe Biden's latest gaffe, that's not going to bring in the new, like, you know, the new crowds. We're not going to be opening up anybody's mind if we're all repeating the same exact talking points that we're allowed to talk about until the, the reason we're here is because not enough people are willing to push the boundaries of that. So I'm, yeah. I'm even doing, you know, my own internal wrestling about this and how to handle it, how to go about circumventing this because like you i don't want to stop talking about these things we are here because people walked on eggshells and stopped talking about things and the less and less we push back the more and more they're going to keep moving that goalpost until none of us are allowed to speak ever again well first first off i commend you for that for your um stubbornness in this you know because i I honestly though it People are thirsty for um, to be to find out that they're not crazy. Yeah, right? true. Yeah, I get told true. this a lot. Like, thank you so much. I you've proven to me that I'm not cuckoo. That mm-hmm. th- the world hasn't convinced me that I'm nuts somehow. And it's like people are honestly thinking that way because they've convinced this. I mean, from Judge uh, Sib- Silberman just basically said, like, look. They have the entire news media. So if you turn on the news, you're being taught that their white supremacy is the biggest issue right now. Uh, mm-hmm. COVID. No, actually, it's COVID-19. And you, you got to wear three masks now. And, you know, you must get a vaccine so that the government can give you your freedoms back. And these people are like, yes, OK. All right. They're, they're soaking up. And then the, uh, the rest of us are like. Are we seeing this? Are we accepting this? This is ridiculous. Yeah. And and people are doing their own research. A lot of people are doing their own research now. You know, I try to convince people all the time. Hey, look, don't even listen to me. Go, go actually listen to me, tune into me and then fact check me. Come, (laughs) come back, you know, go look up what I was talking about. Dig into it more if you're interested in it. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, if, if you find something that you think is important, dig into it and then talk about it. And that's what we're doing. That's what you're doing. And it's like, if if people like you and I give up and show that we're going to give up and like, you know, it's not worth it anymore. I'd rather keep my my following on social on some social media platform because that's more important to me than my integrity. No mm-hmm. way. My integrity means a lot to me. I, I and I, you know, I pride myself on 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 showing up and, and you know, coming to you know the people that follow me they show up for me the least i could do is show up for them you know and and definitely and we're proving to them that it's like it's worth it to stand up even if it's on a platform people are like well why are you still on twitter because i have seventy eight thousand people that follow me on there that listen Mm -hmm. to me that i can talk about this stuff and say hey we should uh maybe you know uh question the powers that be asking why that's the best question ever why i want to know why and we've we've gotten to a point in society too where it's not only that we can't talk about things but we can't question them because even questioning something is misinformation at this point and it's like exactly no questioning things is a healthy thing to do because maybe if we had questioned these things sooner all of these other things wouldn't have happened and i think it's healthy to have that curiosity it's healthy to continue to research your own things but again the media our government politicians big tech they don't want us questioning things they want us to just accept the narrative as is they want us to accept reality in the way that they're giving it to us when and it's so funny too to like talk to leftists and people on the right because i feel like they're living in two different realities and they are 
because people on the left don't understand what's truly going on because the media doesn't allow them to see what's really going on. Right. And they don't want to. It's yeah. exhausting. There's that other layer too. <laughs> it's exhausting. And you know, they, they just, they're, they're happy virtue signaling. Well, I was told that I'd, all I have to do is put BLM in my, in my, my profile. And suddenly I'm a, I'm an ally. It's like, I, they have no idea what they're talking about. They don't oh, even get yeah. it. Exactly. And, you know, one of my biggest frustrations this week has been how white supremacy is somehow being blamed for all of these anti-Asian hate crimes. So on my Odyssey channel, I have a video there. Um, I have two videos there. One is my band live stream and one is my latest video. I'm basically talking about which community is uh, really responsible for a lot of uh, these hate crimes that are being perpetuated and have been perpetuated since last year in September that okay. no one in the media wants to talk about uh, because, again, it doesn't fit the narrative. So, um, yeah, white supremacy, you know, just slap They're that label even... on everything. Well, first, I always have to do this disclaimer. I can't stand this race conversation. It's so stupid. It has nothing to do with race. They keep exactly. Every, everybody keeps making it about race. Stop. It's not about race. All right. Maybe it is for some people, but you can't just slap race on things and be like, well, that's it. There it is. We've answered it. It's like, no. Exactly, Adam. Exactly. And that's my biggest beef, too, is when other conservatives are like, oh, you're an Asian minority woman. I'm like, no, I'm an American. OK, I'm an American. I'm not playing yes. into this racial nonsense. And I'm going to call mm. out every single community that is acting a fool. I don't care what your skin color is, because if a community is acting badly, we need to be calling them out. And the reason why Thank we are you. where we are is because, uh, again, too, Black Lives Matter has made it to where we cannot call out the black community without being called a racist. Police cannot arrest black people without it becoming a racial issue. This is not about race. If this was the Hispanic community, the white community, let's call everybody out. And if we really wanted equality, we would be calling out every single race equally when they are committing crimes, when they are detrimental to this country. Exactly. We would be calling them out equally. Exactly. If they don't. They don't call them out evenly, equally. Yeah. That like they're not going for equality. They're 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 flipping it. They're they're mm -hmm. they're saying, well, it's this way, so it should be this way. And it's like, no, not not <laughs> at all. I mean. And Terry oh. Crews called this out almost, a, I don't know if it was a year ago. It was maybe July or something last year. And he said, we mm -hmm. have to make sure that Black Lives Matter doesn't become Black Lives Better. And it has. You've yeah. basically, that's basically what you said. It's like, I, I don't, nobody is better than anyone else. That's what I believe. Everyone has to earn their keep. I don't care what your skin color is, period. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I, I I feel like we're getting a little sidetracked because... Uh, I just want to bring this up. Check this out. Have you heard of Carbon? I have not. So Carbon is a new uh, social media platform that, um, see, where where is the list of, oh, here we go. Carbon is free speech, social, earn crypto rewards for your content, nice, global nice. and friend leaderboards. I don't know what that means, but that sounds kind <laughs> of fun. Anonymous sign up option, fully encrypted private data and DMs, optional decentralized data. Team tools and airdrops, NFTs, and more awesome features yet to come. I mean, then we got Trump coming out with the social media. I don't know what it's called yet. Maybe it'd be kind of fun as Trump it. Trump, tr I don't know. What, what, what <laughs> that would be, be great. You know, I don't know. It's, it's kind of kind of perfect, but um, people are, uh, there's a Washington Post article. Straight up, Washington Post wrote an article about his new social media platform and said, nobody cares. <laughs> They're like, Again, that's in the, the headline. media trying Wash to the narrative that no one else is agreeing with. They're like, they in the headline, it's straight up. Actually, let me see if I can find this. Washington you, Post. You know what it, that reminds me of, too, is how uh, the media keeps telling us how Joe Biden is the most popular president. But if you go to his YouTube videos, they all have more dislikes than likes and have like just dismal views. They have no views on them. So, you know, another media trying to push the narrative type thing. Oh, they changed it. Oh, I hate when they do that. I they hate that. They changed it. Of course they did. Let me see mm -hmm. if I can. Uh... No. Have you ever All heard right. of Wayback Machine? Sometimes you can put the article into Wayback Machine. It will show you the original headline. Mm, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mm -hmm. know. that Washington Post has 
so many articles written about Trump and social media that I don't even know where it, to begin looking. Uh, but I'll tell you what it said, though. It said Trump may start his own social media, but nobody cares. And it's like, you care. You wrote an yeah. article about it. You clearly care. And the whole article is like, there's probably millions and millions of people that are going to go to it. But why should we care? It's only going to be an echo chamber. And it's like, or everyone will go there and wherever you are will become the echo chamber. Hmm. Which it already is, but uh, that's already none of our business. Yeah, they don't talk about the fact that the people over on the left, the the you know, the Democrats, just like we talked about, that the little bar, it's all blue. It they're mm -hmm. in the echo chamber. Even I have some blue and some, you know, I'm pretty much 50-50 as far as like news from the right and news from the left and middle, okay? But as far, as I said earlier, the news from the right tends to be more truthful. Tends to be more Adam, truthful. I swear, everything the left accuses us of being is exactly what they are. They're conspiracy theorists. They're in echo chambers. Like, everything they throw at us, racist. Like, yeah, the left is actually racist. We have them act actively pushing for segregation and hating on white yes. people all day, every day. Crazy. And like, y'all are projecting how you guys feel about yourselves and how you guys actually act on the conservative community because who's truly putting these words into action? It's not conservatives. Mm -hmm. You heard that? Nailed mm -hmm. it. All right, let's, let's, that's perfect. Let's move on. Let's, I think we, I think we crushed that. Uh, very nice. So uh, segment. And, and again, shout out to judge Silberman. You are boss. And for those, I saw someone ask who was the judge he was talking about. Judge Silberman. Silberman. Uh, his first name was it Lawrence? Lawrence Silberman. What a good name. I know. Solid, solid. name. Definitely. Solid name, Judge. I salute you. 